right, today we're just going to do a little review of molecule polarity. So I wanted to start with a review of electronegativity. And remember that electronegativity is how much um, or how likely an element is to pull the electrons toward itself when it's in a covalent bond. So the most electronegative atom on the periodic table is fluorine up here. And um, because that's the most electronegative, that is where the electrons are going to move if fluorine is in a bond with something else. And the least electronegative would be uh, francium down here at the bottom, number 87. So you can take a look at your periodic table and figure, you know, the farther it is away from fluorine, the less electronegative it's going to be. The closer it is to fluorine, um, the more electronegative it's going to be. And that's just our trend. All right, so um, now let's talk about polar versus nonpolar molecules. So if we have a nonpolar molecule, our electrons are going to be evenly distributed around the molecule. All right, so if we look at this um, image here that was from the uh, polarity simulation, you can see that I've shown the um, electrostatic potential, but it's all white. There's no difference in charge on one side versus the other side because atoms A and B have exactly the same electronegativity. Right? Whereas if we look at the molecule over here, um, atom B is much more electronegative, which is why the arrow is pointing that direction. All right, And now we've pulled all or a lot of the negative charge over here toward B, leaving the nucleus of A exposed and leaving positive charge over there. All right, So here the negative charge is shown in red and the positive charge in blue. All right. <clears throat> we can also look at molecules that aren't just two atoms. So here we've got um, methane, which is carbon with four hydrogens. And this is that tetrahedral geometry that we looked at before, right? And um, because carbon and hydrogen have very similar electronegativities, we don't really get much difference in charge on one side versus the other side. And because all three of these things are going, um, are, are pulling equally away from each other, then we that that uh, symmetry also makes this molecule nonpolar. So our electrons are evenly distributed all around. We don't have one side that's different from another, right? Whereas here, um, now we have two hydrogens and two fluorines. So those fluorines are going to be much more electronegative than the carbon, and we'll pull the electrons down this direction, and that's how you see that red down here, um, because that's the negative side of the molecule, and the blue up here being the positive side. All right, so now let's look at a couple of examples using Lewis structures, which is how we normally look at molecules. So here I've shown the structure of water, right? And um, if you look at your periodic table, you can see that oxygen is pretty close to fluorine and hydrogen is pretty far away. So oxygens are more electronegative atom. So we're going to have electrons being pulled from each hydrogen toward the oxygen. All right, now the way this is drawn, it looks as if um, we're, we're pulling evenly from both sides. But if you remember, um, part of the reason we spent so much time looking at molecule shapes is because the Lewis structures only give us a two-dimensional view, right? So we have these two lone pairs of electrons, which are negative charge that are, it's taking up space and causing repulsion uh, with those oxygen-hydrogen bonds. So this molecule, even though it looks linear, the way it's drawn is actually bent like this, okay? So our um, hydrogens, the electrons from them are being pulled up toward the oxygen, which would be this pink atom here, okay? And if we look at that one in our simulation, you can see, like I said, the hydrogens have a positive charge and the electrons are being pulled up toward the oxygen, giving it a partial minus, all right? So we represent that with this little symbol here, it's called a delta. All right, it looks kind of like a cross between an S and an 8. So if you were to start to make an 8 and then stop before you get all the way to the top, then you've made a lowercase delta. And then the negative charge is up here because that's the direction the electrons are being pulled. And then the po partial positive charge is down here on the hydrogens. All right, so this molecule is polar. We have clearly have one side that has a negative charge and another side that has a positive charge. Right now here we have CO2. This one is drawn with dots instead of lines for the bonds. Okay, oxygen again is going to be more electronegative than the carbon because it's closer to that fluorine. All right, so our electrons are going to be pulled away from the middle of the atom. 
right? In this case, we don't have any extra dots that aren't in bonds on our carbon. So this one is actually linear, okay? So if we pull evenly on both sides with our oxygens, then we're going to end up with a small negative charge on either side, like you, is shown here. But we don't have one side that has a positive charge and one that has a negative. We have two ends that have small negative charges, all right? So our two ends are not different, all right? Even though we have some polar bonds in that molecule, so that makes this molecule nonpolar. Right? So I hope this helps um, review polarity of molecules and introduce um, the partial charges and how to tell which end is going to be positive and which end is going to be negative.